Back to our coverage of the Ramadan, Muslims in Nigeria joined their counterpart across the world for the commencement of the fasting period. And this comes as the Sultan of Sokoto, Sahad Abubakar III, announced the sighting of the crescent of Ramadan, which signals the beginning of fasting. The Sultan made the announcement at his palace in Sokoto after receiving and verifying reports of moon sighting across the country. He appealed to Muslims to pray uh, for God's intervention in the country. Let's talk about the significance of the Holy Month um, in the beat. I'm joined by Chief Missioner uh, at Saruddin Society, Nigeria, Sheikh Abdurrahman Ahmed. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Um, let's get to it because of the time. Do you agree that this year's Ramadan may be quite challenging for Muslim faithful considering the current economic situation and the price of food commodity? You know, some have jokingly said that the fast started way earlier before this official announcement? Uh, well, um, thank you for having me. It, it will be challenging, you know, uh, for so many reasons. But Ramadan, fasting, has always been challenging for Muslims, and it's not strange. Uh, it's about discipline. It's about uh, self-denial. It's about empathy. It's about, um, you know, uh, uh, seeking forgiveness of Allah. Um, it is not going to be the first time. It was much more challenging during COVID, and uh, well, Muslims still coped across the world. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I guess that uh, uh, Muslims are more committed. They are more dedicated. It's an opportunity for them to seek the face of Allah, His good countenance, and to intercede on behalf of. Um, you know, this country and our leaders. So challenging it is, but then it, it is not strange. Absolutely. And I get your point precisely. But how do you react to those who have asked that instead of sponsoring radio programs and lesser hajj, that privileged Muslims should instead use the funds this year to feed the poor? I think there are two different things. And uh, uh, both, many other things could go together. This is what Muslims have been doing for a very long time, educating. You know, fasting is not just about uh, 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 abstinence from food and drink and other things. It's also feeding the soul. You feed the stomach, you feed the soul. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's comprehensive, it's total. Uh, in the past, uh, those who are well-to-do have been sponsoring programs. At the same time, they have been providing uh, a meal for iftar. They have been uh, doing palliatives, you know, so to speak, long ago. So I believe and I'm convinced that both could go together. The call that they should not sponsor Islamic programs and so on so far is unnecessary. And I think it is um, uh, being hysterical about the whole thing. Programs can still be sponsored, people can still be fed, charities can still be given. Um, people will have to choose what they are able to do. But leaving one for the other is not right. So you're saying that both can go hand in hand. Correct me if I'm wrong, given is fundamental Absolutely. for, given as I understand it, it is, is fundamental for Muslims during Ramadan as they expected That's to be right. more generous and increase their charitable activities. Um, but are Muslims on there any obligation to give if at this critical time they don't even have enough themselves? No, you know, giving is, uh, is voluntary. Uh, and it's up to the giver to determine uh, how much and uh, to what extent. So um, this kind of giving you know, charity, sadaka is voluntary, is not obligatory. And that's why the society, as far as land is concerned, is divided into two, those who give and those who receive. These two groups must exist, otherwise it will be meaningless. There will be a group of people who are well-to-do, who are more than enough, who can spare, you know, um, from what they have to give to those who have much less. But the principle is that no matter how small you have, give something, even if it is one date, even if it is one date, even if it is a sachet of water, 
give something. This is the spirit. It's not about hoarding. It's not about being mindfully. It's about giving the little that you have. So, and I'm sure uh, everybody will give and everybody, most people will also get. Sheikh, you agree that we're very religious people. Either you're a Christian or Muslim. You know, Nigerians believe in God and they passionately explore, you know, either of these two religions. You can add the third one if you like to reach out to their God. But how much impact are you looking forward to see the spiritual period have on, for instance, the nation's economy, on the quality of leadership, and also the quality of lifestyle as we know it in Nigeria? I think there are two different things, being religious and being godly. Uh, you, know, you know, we just, in most cases, uh, most people just mouth it, uh, being religious. It's not just about the physical ritual. It is deeper than that. It is a deep commitment to obeying. Okay, I, I give you a, a, a scenario. Uh, the same people who hoard food are the same people who provide iftar. For instance, I'm not saying this is real. If we have a situation like this, then it is useless. It is, um, it is uh, it, it's counterproductive. How can you give one hand and take of the other. But I am expecting if fasting in the month of Ramadan is done as it should be, it should impact individuals. It should actually bring about change. They should be more considerate. They should have better consideration for human beings, for their fellow human beings. They will... They, 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 Fasting the month of Ramadan should uh, make them not to cheat, not to uh, uh, steal, not to hoard, not to profiteer, not to give bribe, not to take bribe, you know, not to shortchange the people. Uh, the fasting in the month of Ramadan should really transform people. To, to, it should make them realize that after all, we own nothing. We own nothing. Of course, everything that we have, we think we have is on a lease. Your, your house is on a lease. Your car is on a lease. Your shoe, your dress. You can use it for, you know, um, so far and no further. Other people will inherit it. So if we realize this, which is what Ramadan is, first in the month of Ramadan is supposed to teach us, then it's going to then, be uh, 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 worthy and really fulfilling. I like but, it. I like it when you um, said when you said that um, it, it is someone can be religious and not godly, and that perhaps brings me to my final question it, about how do we, you know, drive this abstinence beyond the thirty day period? Because there are people who, for instance, adjust and align. Across the world, you hear about ceasefires during Ramadan, and then you hear people leave their, their sinful lifestyle, stop drinking, stop womanizing for that period of time. But then there are a few people, I don't have the science to prove it, but there are people who immediately after that period of time revert to status quo. You see, there, there is a hadith of the Prophet uh, that whoever, you know, does not... Uh, he, he, I, I, I read the hadith in Arabic, I translate it, it's just for effect. The Prophet Sallam said, Man lam yada'a kawla al-zhur wal amala bi wal jira laysa lillahi haja fi antada'a ta'amuhu wa sharaba. The Prophet Sallam said, um, whoever will not abandon, you know, uh, reckless talk and behavior and acting ignorantly, flippantly, uh, then Allah has no need for his, you know, abstaining from food and drink, which means, in effect, that if one fasts the month of Ramadan, uh, you know, and this fasting at the end of the day does not result in attitudinal change, does not, in, uh, you know, result in, you know, transformation, in, in, in adjustment, then uh, it means that one has not done it. And the ultimate test for the acceptance of this deed is that it is impactful. Mm. It is that 
it has brought about transformation. It has brought about change. It is a rebirth. If the whole of Ramadan, after 30 days, you can abandon lying, adultery, fornication, stealing, taking bribe, giving bribe, and after 30 days you return, you find it convenient to return, then it means you are just pretending, and then Allah has not accepted it. It means, in effect, you have not done it at all. But I believe that uh, no, no, no one wants to waste time. Indeed. People will be more committed. Indeed. People will be more enlightened. And that is the more reason why you cannot abandon sponsoring programs. I hear you very clearly, Sheikh. To feed people. We have to go now. The whole essence of religion or godliness, as you have put it, is impact and transformation, if I'm going to borrow your words. And we're looking forward to how much of impact this um, season will have on the national development. Sheikh Abdurrahman Ahmed is the Chief Missioner and Sargent Society of Nigeria. Thank you so much for talking to us on the You're program welcome. this evening.